Hello, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and I'm going to show you how I painted um, some oak leaves on a fall sign. The tutorial for that fall sign is on my blog. And here's the line drawing I made from that leaf. I had blown it up. I wanted it to be a little larger. You can make it larger or smaller as you please. And I'm filling my three quarter inch flat brush with the goldenrod paint. And I am just going to fill in this whole leaf with the one color. I just follow along the lines. I'm not going to be too concerned about whether I'm going over the lines a little bit. Uh, on a wood surface that's painted, um, it would flow a little bit better. This is my uh, acrylic, not acrylic, but multi media pad that I do all my sketching and what have you on and uh, it's also my little paint journal different things I try and uh, there's a link for it on my blog this is the smaller size I have a larger one too but this is like my travel size I could take with me wherever I go tuck it into my purse and I'm ready to sketch if I so desire and one day I will try some watercolor painting. Again, it's been years since I've done it. Um, they have great travel kits that I want to try. Okay, so you see I've just filled it in along the edges. I'm not too concerned with being outside or inside. On a painted surface I would be able to erase the lines that are outside the painted surface. So there you have that. We'll let that dry a little bit. Uh, on especially on here it won't lift it as much but on a painted surface it will um, it would lift the paint if it was too wet on a wood surface I'm sorry and on the paper it won't do that as much so just be careful when you're doing this on a painted wood surface or sealed wood surface okay this is Pueblo Pueblo I still have the yellow in my brush I'm just going to work a little bit of the Pueblo in there this is kind of dry so I might barely touch my brush into water and what I'm going to do is just kind of blend this along the edges to add that darker color lift your brush here and there as you go just to see how it's blending in doesn't have to be perfectly the same width of the Pueblo and if you're getting it too wide you can also use a smaller brush if you're more comfortable with a smaller brush and I'm just blending that in the underneath color now this underneath color is a little bit wet and as my brush gets drier it's kind of fading out but that's okay you don't want it all just one one way let's see we'll see if kind of blend it in a little more I got a little more yellow on my brush not too much you don't want to just go over it you want to just kind of blend it so the dry brushing is good now if you wanted it to have the Pueblo on that side and maybe um, this is the colors I used on the sign so that's why I'm using these colors. Uh, here's the raw sienna. Um, I can, I don't know, I'll kind of blend out. What I mean by blend out is kind of rub some of it out and I'll get the raw sienna on the same corner because I had the Pueblo and I'll just come back in and do this again. And you'll see the color change there, but you're still getting some of that Pueblo color. Now fall leaves are many times variegated or different colors all over and you can just kind of draw it in there. Um, you can choose what color you want to do your veining with. It could be darker or it could be lighter. I'm just going to go in with the raw sienna. I'm just working it into my brush trying to get that chisel edge back and just kind of draw in some veining. Not just, I'm using the 
corner of my brush here so I don't get it too thick. And there you have one of the leaves. Now I'm going to do it with a darker center and lighter edge. I just have to turn my page here. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're going to do the darker center, lighter outward. I'm doing raw sienna on this, on my brush. I had rinsed it out, my brush that is. And I got plenty of paint on there and I just will do the same thing. Just going to outline, fill in this with the raw sienna. I try to do it as quickly as I can, that way it uh, stays wet enough usually. I don't have enough paint to blend the colors into it. And with the lighter going on top, we'll see how well it blends and lightens. It's easier to blend a dark on top of the light in the craft acrylics. This is the plaid um, folk art raw sienna color. And you can tell I'm not being excruciatingly careful because not all two leaves are exactly the same. And even though I have the same outline, I could get another leaf and make another one outlined, make it a little variety. And plus I'm trying to hurry so I don't bore you to death. Okay. There we have it mostly outlined. So now I'm going to go in, I'll wipe off, I'll try to scrape off some of the paint on one side. I get dipping the one side into the burnt sienna and the other into the goldenrod and I'm just blending it in. Get more raw sienna, I think I have a lot of goldenrod there. So I'm just going to kind of work it around like I did the other one. You notice that the wet raw sienna underneath really tones down the goldenrod. So I'll get a little bit more goldenrod on my brush. Like I said, if you're more comfortable with a smaller size brush, go ahead and use it to get this detail. So I've got my finger in there. breeze going there. I'm in my studio so I've got the windows open. Fortunately it's not too noisy in the neighborhood. Okay and then I don't know let's see if I can get veining with the light the goldenrod yellow. Let's see. Yeah did just fine. So now I will come back. Uh, that's a little messy. Not messy, I should say. Maybe I want to try some terracotta, not terracotta, but Pueblo on one side of this just to give it a little interest. Don't even have to do all of it. Maybe just a section, like the lower sections of the leaves. Kind of blend. And I, whoops, I'm off the screen. Sorry. So you get the gist of it. Now, to, I want to show you how I shadow it. I didn't go down, create the whole stem there. Different color, but you get the idea. Okay, now for shadowing, I will go to a number 10 flat. And clean brush, it's damp. And where is, I need some, no, I think I have some on here. I have some floating medium, which is clear. I've got my brush going in it here, work my brush in it. This is burnt umber. And I work my corner of my brush into it. And then I will go along the edges. I 
And if it drags, get more on your brush, more floating medium. Blend it, more burnt umber on the side. You notice along the top, I have a narrower shadow line, and then along the bait underneath, it's wider. And there you have it. It, it drug, but on a painted sealed surface, it wouldn't drag as much. And on here, like if I got it too dark, I can't um, remove it. But on a painted surface, you could come back with a damp cloth and um, remove what you don't like, or if you need to darken it, darken it. And that is about it for painting oak leaves.